Welcome back guys. I've come back today to uh, return these Perkins injectors that I've serviced in a previous video. Um, if you check the, the video before, you'll see that that's the work I've just carried out. So just down there in the box, all the bits and bobs ready to go. That bit hose is just to create a little, um, there's a ring underneath the injector to create a seal between the injector and the head. It just stops any contamination going down there. But yeah, we'll go and crack on, get them all in, uh, start each engine up and determine if we need to do any advance on the timing. Um, it's a lovely day, a bit overcast down in West London, but um, all should be good and we'll go from there. Right, let's go and have a look. Well, here we are, <coughs> just at the engine now. Basically, what I've got to do now is just put a bit of um, paper towel down in each down in each of the injector ports, just to make sure there's no contamination down in there. Because you don't want any grit or grime being caught in between the seal. So just using a pair of tongs or um, there's another name I can't think what they're called now. Anyway, just grab down and get all that gunge out. Look. Any rubbish and just have a little look in there. It looks clean from here. And repeat 12, so six times per engine, 12 in total. And then the uh, copper washes and the top down. Exciting. So, started to uh, torque these in now to make sure they're all evenly torqued down because they are part of the plugging arrangement for each cylinder and that stops the combustion gases escaping. So you need a square fit on the copper washer it's at the bottom of the injector. I was try and do things one-handed whilst holding a phone. I didn't bring my GoPro today, unfortunately. I got left with it without sticking it in the van, so that's how it goes. Um, but now I found copper ease, or someone had used copper ease or copper slip or copper grease. Uh, around the bodies going into the injector now perhaps that's acceptable in a automotive application but in a marine engine I think that's probably unwise uh, copper is a conductive agent and you may start causing electrolysis problems especially if you get any salt water up in here and because it is running on raw water cooled and this runs in the Thames that's, that's a high possibility so anything to reduce the possibility of corrosion because you've already got some quite heavy corrosion at the back here on the exhaust manifold Anyway, I digress. Let me get these all double checked to make sure I haven't just missed anything by talking on camera. Bolt them out. I'll put the spill rail on. I'll show you that quick. Then we'll do a first start. I haven't done anything else this yet, so hopefully that's all it took to um, sort the smoky problems out. If not, the injection pump needs a little twist just to advance the timing, which on an old engine like this can definitely help it sometimes. And then, of course, now it's spill rail. So I've pretty much set it up. Just got to tighten all the banjo bolts down, fix up the two lines there and there. And then we're almost ready to do a start. Uh, injection, high pressure lines are all done up. Everything's been torqued down. So it's just a case of uh, come in and, and feel it tight. Don't really have a torque setting for these because you're crushing copper between brass and steel. And you just get a feel for it. And if it's got a slight weight, just go back again. But all the faces are in really good condition, actually. I don't think I ended up lapping anything. It wasn't really required. So just do them up nice and... This, I can't say tight because how do you translate tight on a video? It's like either you have a feel for it or you don't. And it's one of those things you just learn as you get in your trade. But what you have to understand is as you're doing it up, or squashing softer materials, so steel being the hardest, brass, bronze, uh, whatever that's going to be, um, I'd say is the next level, then the copper is the softest thing. But obviously you've got to be careful because you are using a spanner on very old equipment. And very old threads, but in good nick, but they all feel good. You just bring over the, the line and then do that up. Right, I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna come away because that's not actually going on square. I can't do it one handed, I'm, I'm a miracle maker, but I'm, not, I'm not, not that great. So, yeah, I'll bring you back in a second to a start. way back round to the starboard engine so this this is the engine that had to have the valve clearances done so I suspect that there's still some settling in to do with that it is a little bit smoker than I want but I can't really do any more than I've done it did clear up once it warmed slightly so I do feel this one needs a good run and then time will tell and I may have to then re review it but um, yeah it's a little bit smokier than I want but again 
It could be that there's carbon that's not quite come off the valves. It could be a number of factors going on here. This one's warm up, and the, this was always a bit funny starting this side, I believe. So, but so far so good. We're getting there. I think that's the best I can get this engine to run. The injector's been serviced. The pump has been uh, advanced because it was. Um, retarded well it's set to the center point really so I think um, that's gonna be the best it can do on this that's one down here comes the next engine so stub is done and it's running better ports coming up and there's the port engine that's very clear that one I'm very happy with that ambient sort of So port engine just needed some new injectors and I haven't even touched the timing, didn't need to. Uh, it's idling really nicely, this is running at about 1000 RPM roughly. I'll back it off in a sec. And then back round to the starboard engine which is noticeably different. So something's going on there as it runs and, and produces the... Um, sorry, I'm losing my words now, basically it's clearer. Um, I suspect possibly it just needs to be run in, which is what I'm thinking. The other side's crystal clear, lovely. This side is still a tad, tad on the smoky side. You probably can't see it here, but just like slight wafts. But I think with a good blast out, a good run, this did should this engine should settle down. But we'll call that a success for now until we uh, know more. I'm gonna come and uh, do a little bit of work on this little LPW3 now. It's a temperature gauge. Fun and games. Thanks for watching. Take care.